What's up, YouTube? So, um, yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's been a, it's Monday and, um, just starting another work week. Um, it's been pretty busy at work. And, um, again, I got some stuff off eBay. Uh, I'm coming off the Comic Con high. And, um, I've just had a lot of time to reflect. Um, I realize I <clears throat> kind of, um, you know, built a lot of anticipation and expectation from that Comic Con. And we came away with a lot of comics. Um, in fact, I got a lot of the comics off my list. And even this latest uh, eBay purchase is also, I've been able to, most, al almost all of the comics I got um, through that through those eBay purchases um, were ticks off my checklist. So um, uh, I have a you know fair amount of um, comics off that list now. Um, there are still a lot more comics that um, on that list that I want. But um, what I'm starting to realize is um, if I don't set boundaries for I guess what I'm collecting I'm gonna end up like those guys you see with the storage units with long box after long box after short box after long box full of comics um, and these are I mean you know they, they've been collecting their entire lives um, and it, they're things that they can't let go I mean I'm sure they sell here and there but oftentimes it's just a slippery slope to like a cyclical um you know you're selling comics to buy more comics <laughs> so it's it's you're not really um uh alleviating and i'm finding myself in sort of in that pattern right now um i haven't sold anything even though um, i you know i i haven't really put the effort in because it takes a lot of you know like I have to take photos, um, post, and you know, posting them on eBay is, is somewhat of a chore, even though you can do it through your phone. Um, it is a chore. And um, a lot of the comics that I have right now uh, just aren't like, they're not in demand. So I don't think I would command a strong price for them. I, I mean, I think some of my books are but the ones that sort of do command demand right now i'm finding i don't want to let go of those books um but um yeah a lot of the books i'm wanting to part with and sell just aren't that much to begin with anyway and so you know how many people are going to want to purchase something and pay for shipping and and just have it be more than what it's worth um, and I think I talked about this in a, in a previous video and some of the challenges you definitely want to maybe create lots and price the lots uh, at, at a real discount but then you want to have the lots be um, something that's not going to cause you you know more headache to try and ship so I was thinking like maybe a 10 book lot, 10 book lots for like, you know, 50 cents a piece would be $5, right? Plus shipping. So if someone's willing to pay for about like a dollar a book, shipping plus like 50 cents per book, which is reasonable. I mean, a lot of these books are in like the dollar two dollar range anyway so I'm really kind of I purchased a lot of these for that but I think for the sake of just getting rid of some comics that I just don't need to put toward getting books I want um, would be just to sell things um, at somewhat of a loss now, um, 
yeah, I mean, and, you know, uh, I don't have, like, Gemini Millers. I do have a lot of, like, cardboard, so I could, like, put it in cardboard. And my my intention was to put it in these plastic, um, they, there's these plastic cases you can get at Daiso, and they can fit about 10 comics easily. Kind of put them in there, kind of wrap them up in bubble wrap, and send it in a box via USPS. Um, it shouldn't be it shouldn't be that expensive actually to do it that way. I'd still think it'd be like, you know, for ten comics, uh, we're looking at probably like three to five dollars to ship it in a box. <clears throat> and um, yeah, I think USPS is the best option. Um, because I do see how FedEx and UPS package handlers, they kind of handle, uh, they don't really do a good job handling it. I think the post office is a little bit more responsible, uh, in terms of their, you know, their, um, their postal workers are, are, are just more like ideal handlers than, than the, than the people they get at um, FedEx and U UPS. That's just, I don't have any data or information, uh, like evidence to back that up. That's just my opinion. But from my experience and, and what I've seen, um, I find that to be the case. So I, I would rather, and, and USPS is a, it's not the cheapest option, but it's a, it's a, it's still an economic option and it gets there pretty, you get it on time. It's not like, usually it takes about three to five business days to get the, the priority mail to get to where it needs to go even if it's like cross country like way across the, the opposite part of the country so um that's kind of what I'm like contending with right now just got like, a lot of things in my mind and I, I need to narrow down and, and and define what I'm collecting whether it's like a full x-men run or a full spider-man run which I have no I have no desire to do something like that. Right now I'm focused on getting as many Jim Lee books from his major sort of comic canon runs and then some of the more rare books like like the Marvel Age 104, some of his more um, interesting variant covers. Um, I did find a comic uh, at Half Price Books, uh, an image comic that he did it's pretty it's pretty obscure i've never seen it before but it, it is a jim lee um art and um there was a little run of it and i just was thinking maybe i should just get the number one but um i didn't i may i may regret that because i'm trying to just pick up as much random stuff and then you know it wasn't expensive it was like half price off something like a dollar fifty or something like that so it was like 75 cents so me i may go back and get that comic but we'll see but yeah i picked up some comics at half price books and i realized if i don't sell those if i don't flip those for you know if i can't get a profit margin off that the books that i'm getting at half price books i should probably just stop going to half price books i'm just because i'm picking up a lot of like you know titles that I don't necessarily like collect or need I'm just getting them because they're you know either really cool covers or um, you know runs of Batman or X-Men or um, something something of the copper age that, that I really enjoyed um, we're looking for value there so oftentimes it's just a lot of random stuff uh, I picked up some George Perez comics um, War of the Gods number three, and then I find out after I bought it, I find it, it's um, it's a really bad low grade copy. I would say it's like a, a three point five or a four. I mean, it presents well, but it's just got this like bite mark on the cover. Like it, it it's a bite. It looks like someone bit the cover, and there's like marks on the back and the front. It's just really weird how it, there's just these like bite bite but it's not a bite it's either a like a baby bit it or not, a child bit it or maybe a dog or something um they're, they're not adult teeth 
I'll, I'll, I'll show it to you like at some point if I get around to showing that book. But anyway, I, I, I spent three dollars on that book, but that book isn't worth worth anything. No one's gonna want that. It is a cool uh, Black Adam cover though. There's Black Adam. It's just one of those cool um, George Perez um, uh, covers. He's got so many great covers. Um, I've been kind of looking, you know, I think the whole industry right now is just rallying around and supporting um, Mr. Perez, who's been diagnosed with um, a terminal cancer and he's not, he's not going to seek uh, like treatment or therapy. So basically he's uh, resigned himself to uh, passing and I think the doctors have given him just months to live so it's a it's a very it's a very sad and tragic um, situation and I just hope I, I'm you know sending thoughts and and um, love to his um, family and 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 George himself um, I'm wishing he you know, just spends his the, the remaining time that he has um, with his loved ones, with the people that care about him, and um, obviously um, try to you know hopefully he's as comfortable as as he can be before before the inevitable. I mean we're we're all uh, going to go at some point, so I think I'm I'm just you know. I'm, I'm kind of putting my collecting in check right now because um, I'm I'm finding that it's not healthy like it was helping me like getting back into the hobby was helping me to um, it was really helping me with my like mental health um, I was focused on th on it and it was really enjoyable but after the Comic Con high I'm kind of in this space now where I, I want to buy comics, but I also want to sell comics. Um, there's all these books that I want, and I'm just amassing books and just spending money. So um, I have to really space out my purchases, make not make purchases on eBay because it's just instant gratification right um, but make it more return and make it more of a hobby so where I'm going out hunting and, and it's just an activity and so if I get into this um, I think you know going to going to comic shops in my area and just digging long boxes that's fun that's fun and there's just something cool about Finding a comic you like, in a in a box, um, and getting a good price for that, um, you're gonna get a better price that way than than on, off eBay. Although eBay, I, I I gotta admit, I did get some pretty good deals on, off eBay, um, and this time around. So uh, when those books come, I'll, I'll share them with you. But um, so right now I have about 83 um, Jim Lee books. Um, that I want to collect. I I'd say I have almost I'd say I have almost um two thirds of that already. So I've already amassed. Uh, but if not two thirds, um, definitely over half, just over half. So I'd say about forty to fifty books of the eighty-three books that I want um, in my Jim Lee collection. Um, so we still got some work to do there, but um, that that's got to be. I don't. I've got to temper my uh, impatience or I guess my my urgency to, to try and get all those books as 
fast as possible. I just need to make, just kind of spread it out, make it a, a, a more enjoyable project. Um, and that just means enjoying the books that I have and, and um, you know, kind of scheduling, uh, like for, for example, next month, making, you know, one, one of the days next month, making it a comic excursion day. Um, and taking like a budget of, you know, like 20, $25 to the LCS and see how many books we can pick up or, or, or just try to get a, a key for $25. Um, so I think if we do it that way, rather than being on eBay all the time and just kind of, you know, like stressing out about like missing out on, um, some kind of deal or just looking for books all the time is, is not helpful. Um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, so we have, again, out of the 83 books, I, I'd say about like 50 books, about 30 some more to go. Now on top of those Jim Lee books, what I want to do is collect, um, uh, about 50, like 50 just um, really key comic books. Now I've reserved those key comics books to be mostly Copper Age books, but I'm not gonna um, limit myself to just collecting Copper Age. If if there's something in the, the Bronze Age or the Silver Age, like for example, I want that Shazam number one, it was really overpriced at the Comic Con, so um, I think Shazam that uh, Shazam prices have gone up for sure. But um, for example, that DC presents number forty nine. I think I think I have a few um, George Perez books on my um, want list now. I want to get the um, Crisis of Infinite Earth. Uh, Infinite Earths, number seven, the, the Death of Supergirl, um, that great Superman, Supergirl uh, cover. That's something I want, and I and I saw it on eBay for like $25. I anticipate it's going to go up in price, but um, I am not pulling the trigger on that right now. I've just spent way too much on comics. So that's something um, we'll wait for. Uh, I also have all these... CDC submissions I want to do that's going to cost money so yeah I think the best thing for me to do right now if I want that George Perez book that it's like 25 or 30 dollars right now the best thing for me to do right now is focus on selling some comics and um, right now I've got like a my short box is full it's full and so i don't mind parting with that entire short box right now um i picked up a lot of stuff i really probably shouldn't have from the con um and i'm just regretting that now there are a lot of books that i just picked up because i thought mm, you know i don't know why actually I, I think it was like um just the fun of there was like a, a 12 for 20 bin, which meant, you know, you get the comics just a little under, uh, under $2. But in the fun of that hunt, I just picking up a lot of random crap that I, I, I didn't need. Um, I mean, there are comics that are, that I, um, at that in that moment I thought yeah this would be cool to have um, some were on my list but um, for the most part they weren't comics that not you know when I look at them now I'm just thinking uh, how am I gonna get rid of this and when you buy something for two to under two dollars and you're trying to sell it for you know two or three dollars it's a it's um it's a bit of a a daunting task when you know it's not in high grade and it's just a comic that no one wants anyway so um 
we're going to try to avoid those kinds of purchases moving forward. I'm going to try to like strictly focus on getting my keys, my, my wish list comics only. If they come in a bulk with some other comics, that's fine. As long as, and that's what I really liked about my initial couple of purchases at the con. Um, I was focused on the comics that I wanted and I, and I might have overspent a little bit, but I was getting what I wanted. That's the most important thing. And w when I did the calculations again, I actually didn't overpay for anything. I was getting them at pretty much like fair market value. Um, sure, I could have gotten a, a more of a discount, but um, I think I got the value I wanted out of it. And um, my only regret is like I paid forty dollars for the Amazing Spider-Man three hundred one, which is a really good deal because that's like a you know it's a hundred dollar book. Um, the only issue is that that copy is probably eight point five at best. It's not a a little dingy it needs cleaning um definitely needs like a press um so it's borderline height i mean it's not it's a via for sure we're looking at maybe like an eight seven five eight ish um had it been high grade for forty dollars it would have been a real bargain but for vf it's still a bargain but i don't know i don't feel good about slabbing it and having it in my collection so if i do slab it i'm thinking um i am going to sell that one uh, and we have a couple that i'm i want to submit to cgc and if they don't come back um like in in high grade uh we'd look to sell them to try and get raw comics that are higher grade so um yeah no comics in this video just a little bit of ranting um but when i come back we'll look at more comics so if uh, i'll try to post these videos um in sequence so you can just go from this rant video i'm not ranting but uh just me trying to really stick within the um to a game plan and not deviate outside of that and if i do deviate outside of something on my wish list have it be something that i know i can sell for a margin make some money off it whether whether it's a i have to get it graded to sell it at a higher margin um that's fine i think that was my plan all, all along but these CGC submissions are pricey themselves, so and it's a bit um, time-consuming. So still something I'm working on. I'm sure once we get around to selling that first slab, I'll I'll feel better about the entire process. But for the most part, um, yeah, um, we don't have any slabs to sell. All the slabs I got back are from my PC, so. Anyway, so when we come back, we'll take a look at some of uh, my key comics.